And good afternoon. Thanks again for watching the launch of Tim Vasquez every Friday here on the On Air Media Network. Boy, I, I, you know, in the preface, I probably didn't give it enough juice. Denise, Karen, welcome to the show. Karen Lucchese, Denise Walreed, hello. You can say hi now. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. <laughs> I know they're like, oh, when do we say hi? You can say hi now. Because I, I warned her before. I said, can't say anything until I introduce you That's guys. hard for me. Okay. I know. I know. Well, I can see peripheral. Out of the corner of my eye, you're like, oh, now, now I want to talk. And Denise is like, yeah. And she's like, Tim, Tim, I want to talk. I said, no, you can't just do it. So again, we have pet names because we've known each other for a while. So what I really, I, I, I think I've been wanting to do a show like this for so long. Karen, you were on a show with me earlier about a year or two ago. Yeah. And we just barely touched the surface of, of, be, of what it's like to be a woman entrepreneur. Uh, Denise, we've known each other for a long time. And, and I've been privy to some of the, 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 the trials mm -hmm. and tribulations you've gone through also. And it's a man's world. But I think you guys have over, and here I'm using you guys, you know, as a euphemism for ladies. So here we go. I'm already in that mindset of the uh -huh. dumb guy, you know, uh, not giving the, the gender its respect. But I, I think I've been wanting to do something like this for so long because I just think, gee whiz, there's so many smart women out there. And they do so many amazing things and men don't give them a chance. And you guys are still being undercut financially. You know, you don't make the money that men do, parenthetically. And that's just BS. It's complete and total BS. But you guys are making it. So uh, I'm going to introduce Denise first. We're going to talk about Nonstop Bella a little bit. Then we'll go to Karen. And I think you both have amazing stories. And we're going to just have a freeform conversation. It's going to be the three of us just having some fun, chatting a little bit, and finding about your businesses and what you've had to do to overcome to become where you're at. Because Denise, first of all, with you with Nonstop Bella, you had another company. Yep. And your company had to do with, with uh, uh, in a sense, of helping children out with health, yes. health care type things. So explain that and then what happened. Well, I have a, it's, I still have the business. It's just on hold right now. It's called Going Nonstop. Right. And we developed that um, to circumvent childhood obesity. And it was a way to get children involved, 5 to 13, where they were having fun. We didn't talk to them about health and wellness, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we had a manual program. We vetted it in South Texas, and we wanted it to all go online. So we had the websites developed. So trying to find the right resources to develop it, because it wasn't just a website. It was actually software, because we, the kids would track things every day, and we measured it. And we wanted to have on-the-fly results right that day on um, all the statistics that we were collecting. And that worked for a while, and then we decided, oh, we have to upgrade our technology and get into app development. And that's where the problems happened. Right, right. I remember that. <laughs> that's when all the problems happened. <gasps> Trying to find resources that will actually deliver what they say they're going to deliver is very challenging when you're, in, when you're in a small business and you don't have unlimited funds. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was a problem. I mean, it was, yes. a, and, and you called me and I had to come yes. and see, and I was like, gee whiz. Yeah. And it was, and, and you'd already sunk so much money into it, and you tried getting rep, uh, uh, some some replicant, replic trying to get some money back. How about that? Yeah. And, and it just, it just, it was a mess. It was. We, I hired three different companies. We did our due diligence, interviewed them. They promises up front, promises up front. Yes, we can deliver. Yes, we can deliver. And ultimately, that is why I put it on the back burner. Mm -hmm. I, you know, the funding was just crazy. Just trying to manage the developers was a nightmare. <laughs> right. And nobody could deliver what we wanted. And, and, and there they was said a, yes up front. Right. And it wasn't just people from being outsourced. It was local businesses. Yes. That, yes. that was the in, – in, in, I generally name those names because I really don't care for shysters and thieves. But you wouldn't tell me because I would call them out. Yeah. So. No, I – you know, I believe – well, I know one of them – uh, is out of business anyway, thank goodness. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not bitter. No, but you know, I, I'm also of the mindset that everything does happen for a reason. Right. And you can't beat yourself up for a failure. Um, I did for a long time mm -hmm. because I'd never really failed so monumentously as, as I thought. But it actually really wasn't a failure. It just really put me in a different direction. And I still have that company and I still have all of you know the structure, et cetera. So I will revisit it and I've already been thinking of a new way to relaunch it mm -hmm. down the road in a more streamlined process and not so uh, healthcare and hospital driven. 
more consumer products and pro sport teams. Okay, so, so it's got a it's got another life in it. Okay, well that's great because I thought the initiative initially again helping children out with obesity yes. was just I mean that's huge. It's a big deal to help people out, and they were getting they were getting rewards. Yes, that was the other cool thing. It's like if you manage this. You're going to get this. And, it's like, and it worked. And that, that was the most satisfying part of it as I was on the ground with the kids actually doing the program in mm -hmm. South Texas. And we could change a kid in, in 10 days. And we can decrease their TV time by 65% and increase their fruit and vegetable intake by 400%. Wow. And we, all, we did it under the, all the guise of just fun. And it was just amazing. It really was amazing. And so it was very heartbreaking when we couldn't get the software right. you know where we needed it to be and couldn't get the apps and i absolutely once i got into the app development process never had a viable product to even demo to anybody wow and and, and the, the technology and you know and that's where everything's going and if you can't find the right people obviously it's just it's a beating but uh we'll go we'll, we'll talk about nonstop bella because uh, patiently waiting over there in the end little karen lucasey <laughs> Karen Lucchese. All right, that's all I got to say. I'm done. The show's done. We're, we're over, folks. No. Karen, again, I, your story was more amazing to me uh, recently because of the fact, I know you've been an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and, and we would message each other, and this is how we got to know each other, yes. like two or three in the morning. Sometimes you know? four or five in the morning. Yeah. And you we're know, still both And we're both working. working. Yeah, we're both yeah. working. And, and I just thought, well, this is fascinating. Now, you know, what drives a person to do the things that I'm doing, being up so late to do this? And you've always had this drive, mm -hmm. even when you were in college. And, and your yeah. dad's the great Frank Lucchese, by the way, uh, the great yeah. Frank Lucchese of the Texas <laughs> Rangers. I don't care about the Phillies. I don't care about anybody else he's with, the, the Texas Rangers. So it's a blessing that, that, that Frank was part of your life, your yeah, dad, that, the, you know, because there's a spirit in that Italian yeah. spirit that, that it's drives. It's a passion. It is you a know, passion. It's, it's and I think that that's passion. important yeah. because you had a, you had a severe case of bad stuff happening to oh, you yeah. too. That yeah. bad stuff made into a book. Yeah. You're a successful entrepreneur. You would have been even more so back then. Oh, yeah. So let's let's. I don't want I don't I don't want to spend tons talking about the book, but I do want to mention because I think this this is a build up to what you become now. Yeah, is, 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 it is because you, you've yeah. done so many amazing, fantastic things. Yeah. So let's talk about the book. I'm just going to call okay. it the book. Hold, I, I Ziggy. I think we've got a picture of the book. And there we go. There and then this woman, the Karen Lucchese <laughs> story. Yeah, a true and tragic tragic story indeed. I, I read snippets of it. Just blew me away. Let's go into that a little bit because, Karen, or Denise, you went through some failure results because of the app development stuff. And you lost not just hundreds of dollars on this. I mean, it was a lot of money that a you lost on this. And yet you persevered. You kept trying. Karen, yeah. it, 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 it's a different situation, but yet it's still in the same vein, same line. Yeah. Okay, so you had a successful business of spas. Yeah, I had Let's the, go into um, that. wellness centers and resorts right. um, based on alternative medicine and um, healthy lifestyle, similar mm -hmm. to your program, which I love that. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so I, at 37 years old, I was gonna, uh, in the process of selling one of my centers for about $8 million. And I went through a um, very uh, dramatic, tragic time in my life. But, um, you know, it's, I've never looked at anything I've gone through, and I hope people don't, um, as things that aren't good or positive in your life those are all stepping stones to become who we are as people we learn we develop and grow so anything negative in life i always say it's a positive you know you get sick i, you, I got sick i learned about alternative me medicine open the wellness centers so then i went through this trial at 37 and you know learned so much helped uh, I hope I helped uh, several people okay, so you know, me, along gonna, the way. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, so I'm gonna jump in here now. Mm -hmm. Get a certain. You're naive. You, you yeah. trust. You trusted. I mean, I, I was a entrepreneur, passion, built a business from nothing, all the way up to. You to know, what could have been an eight million dollar just one center? One one center, and I had five. And, yeah. Um, so I was 37. I was ready to to partially retire, and. Um, no, I would have been done. <laughs> well, not me though. I'm a workaholic, uh, and I have to have yeah. something going on. Right. So, but you know, but at that time, my my life was supposed to veer off in a certain way, and 
you know, I was um, set up and, and uh, framed for a fake crime, and I took it to trial. But but it was the people that you trusted. The people that, who, that, who that, do you that, trust and lie? That, that, that thought you were going to help you with what your the, business. Family, the, friends. Doctor. Oh, lawyer. Yes. Yeah. Pastor, I mean, all these people are the people you trust, and, and that's who betrayed me. And, and a justice system betrayed me. Yeah, you know, right, because it, there is no justice system. Um, you know, we're, we're not innocent until proven guilty. We're guilty until proven innocent if we're ever given the chance. So I'm hoping this book will open up the eyes to um, America and, and see this happens to everyday people. You just yeah. recently you just recently did an interview with Channel Eight. Yes, uh, we took the clip from that, and Great. we're going to replay that and, okay. and let people see, and uh, then we'll talk a little bit more about okay. you guys. So tonight, a different take on freedom before the Fourth of July: an innocent woman thrown in prison for a crime she did not commit. She shared her Independence Day story with our Teresa Woodard. This was actually the first visitation day that my family came to see me. She doesn't need the photos. The cold metal beds, stark white sheets, and dull dark uniforms made the kind of memories she won't ever forget. Knowing when that door locked and closed and you heard it, that the world as I knew it didn't exist right now. Karen Lucchese went to prison, even though she committed no crime. The, the statement has always been, um, we're innocent until proven guilty in America. We are Americans and that's the way the system is, but it's not. Lucchese once owned a successful chain of spas and wellness centers in Tarrant County and beyond. Her personal attorney had access to her office, her records, and unknowingly gained access to her checking account. That's forged. When the DEA set up a sting, that attorney was caught laundering money through Lucchese's account. He took a plea deal and testified against her. Nothing was allowed into evidence. For the jury to see. They had me take a polygraph. I passed it. They created the questions, passed another one. Uh, videotapes that exonerated me, that were undercover tapes, um, were never allowed. After a three hour trial, she spent five years behind bars. Multiple appeals followed before finally a win. I prevailed on a vacated sentence in, in the Supreme Court, and they ruled it my constitutional rights were violated. In simple words, I can just say that this is a um, clear case of entrapment. Former DEA special agent in charge, Phil Jordan. An innocent woman went to prison wrongfully. To civil trial. Lou Casey later sued that personal attorney. The parties admitted that what they did. He settled the case. Using his influence and position. And admitted Lou Casey was innocent. This happens to people. It happened to me. Please stop. She hopes her newly published book, Innocent Woman, provides proof that while the justice system is often right, sometimes it's painfully wrong. Teresa Woodard, Channel 8 News. Karen Lucchese is the daughter of Frank Lucchese, manager of the Texas Rangers during the 70s. He's now 92. And according to Karen, her father's health quickly declined while she was in prison. Watching that, she says, was the most difficult part of her journey. Just an amazing story. You didn't cry. You not, didn't cry. Not yet. Did, I, but I'm, I was looking at you watching this, and you looked down several times. It's yeah. obviously it's a, it's, a, it's a terrible memory. Yeah. It, it, um, it, you know, people deal with trauma, business losses, personal losses, in a different way, different ways. And mine was putting a wall up for protection so my family would never see me um, in pain or hurt or upset. So I learned to deal with it that way. But you smiled the whole time. You even started a program in prison. Yes. For, to fit, help women out. Fit for life. Yeah. yeah. So again, About another, white man and another entrepreneurial thing. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was my purpose at the time there. Yeah. You know, and, and again, in any any business or personal apply what you're going through negative or positive to something else to grow yourself and other people i mean it's it's always never look back you know one more question how did you feel about that picture being taken you're holding the bars what were your memories um you know just you know 
I needed a, a cover shot and I